Greetings. Um, so, uh, the Academy Awards uh, just happened not too long after, oh, not too long ago as of recording this uh, video, but, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to talk about every single win or anything, but I'm going to primarily discuss, um, the wins of Oppenheimer because this film won seven Academy Awards Best Picture Best Director Best Actor for Killian Murphy Best Supporting Actor for Robert Downey Jr. Um, best Original Score Best Cinematography and Best Editing um Yeah, that is seven. I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm like, did I count right? And I did. <laughs> um, as I've already said before, I really love this film. I thought it was phenomenal. On the big screen in IMAX as well. And um, I actually saw this film again this past Saturday because uh, Cinemark Theaters, they are playing... They were playing all the best picture nominated films for a certain period of time, for like a week. And then the last day they had Oppenheimer. So I thought I'd like to try and see that again. And I was able to. But being able to see this on the big screen before, you know, the Academy Awards. And at this point, it was like a foregone conclusion that, uh, Christopher Nolan would finally win Best Director and Best Picture, along with his wife, Emma Tom Thomas, as well as Charles Roven, who this is the fifth film they have worked on. Um, they started to work together since uh, Batman Begins, and so for like 20 years, they've all been working together, and... Uh, Seeing uh, Robert Downey Jr. win was great, as well as Killian Murphy. You know, and for a while it would seem like it was going to be between uh, uh, Paul Giamatti and Killian Murphy, but the last few award ceremonies, uh, Murphy uh, was uh, victorious, and uh, yeah, and he continue to win and uh very much deserved um as is as was a uh, uh uh yeah robert downey jr's win um divine joy randolph won best supporting actress which you know and i really liked uh, emily blunt's performance in this um but you know uh, it, it wasn't a massive surprise to see her uh, uh, lose uh, to uh, the enjoy Randolph. Um, you know, at least she lost to somebody who was deserving of uh, the Oscar. But it's a very shocking that this is the first time Emily Blunt has been nominated for an Academy Award. Um, maybe not so much for Killian Murphy, since, you know, Killian Murphy primarily does mostly small indie films. I know he did Peaky Blinders for many years, and so, in terms of film projects, you know, you probably have to, like, you know, doing multiple episodes of that show, he's like, he'd have to be very uh, particular about whatever he chose. And, you know, usually he would choose to work with Christopher Nolan whenever he would ask him. Like, I think the only time that he asked him to be in a film of his was, uh, uh, during that time was, uh, Dunkirk. And that's it. Um, sixth time. First time he's the lead, he wins an Academy Award. Uh, um, and of course, it's great to see Nolan finally win uh, Oscar for best uh, uh, director and best picture. Um, truly deserved. And on the back here, 
you know, it lists what, like, you know, like a, um, Academy Award winner, Matt Damon, uh, Oscar nominee, uh, Robert Downey Jr., now he's a winner, Oscar nominee Florence Pugh, and then Oscar winners, uh, Casey Affleck, Remy Malek, and Kenneth Brenna. Um, and it's also cool that, uh, for here that Matt Damon is listed as an Oscar winner and that might be seen as like a well no duh he won an Academy Award but I've actually seen on the back of covers of like DVDs and Blu-rays where he's listed as a nominee because you know his only Oscar was for writing Goodwill Hunting and yet you know because he's just known as an actor primarily and while he has produced more mo movies over the years so if he ever won, like, Best Picture, it probably would be seen as, like, yeah, that's not surprising, you know, yeah. but he hasn't written too many movies since Goodwill Hunting, and so, because of that, like, sometimes they just write, well, he hasn't won an Oscar for acting, he's a nominee, yeah, which is quite odd and peculiar, but I don't know, sometimes the people who write the back of these things when they list who's a nominee and a winner of certain awards makes you wonder whether or not they're completely, you know, uh, fully aware of, uh, somebody winning an award that isn't necessarily for what you would specifically think, you know, again, you know, Matt Damon actor, um, not so much actor writer, but you know, he is. He has written a couple other movies, um, but not as much. But yeah, uh, truly deserving of all the uh, Academy Awards this film received. I actually thought it would win Best Sound, but it did not. Um, Yeah, it's, it's nice when a uh, good film wins uh, accolades, you know, it's been quite a while since a film that is beloved uh, like Oppenheimer has gone all the way like this, you know. Uh, um, I know people will say, like, well, what the, you know, everywhere and everything all at once. Um, but, you know, the, this was such a huge, monumental success that it's just like, I don't know, the only thing that I could probably say that would be actually in sort of a contender of this uh, film and at the acclaim and accolades would be Lord of the Rings Return of the King because you know that also was a major uh, mega blockbuster film um, of course it was the end of a trilogy but still it was so huge and amazing and it won every Academy Award it was up for including Best Picture um, and that was 20 years ago so 20 years later a film like this wins and the fact that this uh, film um, about the g guy who uh, was instrumental in the making of the atomic bomb and uh, showed his story within three hours with half of it being in black and white, that's just truly amazing. I... The fact that this made almost a billion dollars is just astounding. Now, of course, you know, Christopher Nolan uh, is a huge reason, but still, anybody else making this kind of film, I don't believe it would have made uh, close to amount of money this film has made. Um, and of course, money isn't always the indicator of a true success, but the fact that, you know, an 
R-rated, half black and white, three hour, uh, uh, really talky film, was able to uh, get people to keep going back and over and over to see this is astonishing. And if anything, that's the power that Christopher Nolan has, uh, as well as everybody involved in this film, because the cast is stellar. Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, Josh Hartnett, uh, Rami Malek, Casey Affleck, Kenneth Brenna, Gary Oldman as President Truman. Uh, just it's just so many other people. It is just this the such an all star cast. Uh, Academy Award winners and nominees and people who have been up for other awards. It's just it's truly amazing. Um, yeah, it's nice this film uh, received the accolades it got. Um, yeah, what do you think uh, if you've seen this film? Uh, do you enjoy this film, and do you think it deserved the awards? Are you happy Christopher Nolan finally won <laughs> an Academy Award after all these years? Like two decades after his first nomination, he finally wins. Uh, and it was like a long row, but he finally won won the top prize and again you know the academy awards at the end of the day do they matter a whole lot not necessarily because you know not always do the best people win um but uh, occasionally uh, the best absolutely wins here and there and um this film uh truly deserved all the accolades in my opinion and I am biased because this was my this is my favorite film of last year, and I do love Christopher Nolan's film. So again, I am biased, but even aside, just looking at this and the other films nominated in the categories, and there's some excellent films uh, up for those categories. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, Scorsese's film, didn't win anything. I'm actually surprised. Um, the one award it seemed like it was had the best chance of, especially after SAG, was uh, Lily Gladstone for Best Actress. Um, but Emma Stone won for Poor Things, so, you know, good for her. Um, but then, of course, there was, discuss was discussion that uh, uh, Gladstone, you know, with her screen time, she might have been perhaps better suited for supporting actress, and that could have possibly had a hand in her losing a lot to Emma Stone, won the Golden Globe for actress in a drama, but after that, uh, until SAG, she didn't, whatever momentum she had from the Golden Globe seemed to kind of go away, unfortunately, but uh, here's looking uh, at her, and hopefully she will get another part in the near future and get nominated and win. Um, but yeah, she uh, did an excellent job. Everybody did in all the categories. This was a, a really good year for film overall. So, you know, uh, even though this was my favorite film, of course, you know, I'll be a little <laughs> bummed a bit that this film didn't win more than seven Oscars. But also, the Oscars it did receive deserved all of them so could i be all that upset or no i'm not upset uh, you know a little disappointed my prefer pick lost sure but beyond that yeah overall i'm quite happy uh again what do you think you think this was a last year was a good year for films overall do you think there was a bit of uh slump do you think some films should have been nominated some films should have been nominated and i guess what specific categories um yeah you could all leave those in the comments below if you want but yeah um 
excellent film. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. Um, just a, just a, I just love this film. Um, I, I, if you haven't seen this, I think you should, it'd be good to at least watch it once. Whether or not you love it, that's another thing, but uh, I think at least on a technical level, especially with the uh, many practical effects, would have been, uh, it's just a phenomenal spectacle to behold, at the very least, as well as well acted. That seems to be something that people have always maintained, and it's the direction is excellent. Um... For some, it might be a little too long, but in my opinion, it was paced perfectly because that, those three hours just flew by for me, and I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm just enraptured. And some of these characters, you know, like uh, Louis Strauss and Gerald Groves and uh, Ernest Lawrence and, uh, and, and just many others, you know, they're just so interesting, you know, and they're, of course, they're supporting roles but they're just so you know uh integral in this film i like i I'd kind of like to see a movie about any of these characters you know just like you know everybody involved was excellent i just just so glad this film received the accolades it has over the award season so yeah didn't get up for visual effects because I guess, you know, because there weren't as many effects in this film compared to other Nolan films. Um, the practical effects that were there, like the, he's having visions of things and there's like all these particles and everything and there's like fire and explosions and all that stuff was done, you know, in one way, you know, and, Kelly Murphy, he had this thing that was right up in front of his face when he was on a bed, and it was just like, just not too far away from his face, and that was a real thing that was in the camera, that like Christopher Nolan and others were able to sort of like spin and project this thing for him, like this is what Oppenheimer is seeing, and it's just, it's just a very, uh, just the effects are really good, it's just, fantastic so yeah i'm gonna quit yapping now but uh yeah this probably won't be on a friday i just kind of want to give my quick thoughts right here and now so next week it'll be another movie so uh yeah i hope all of you are doing well hope your week has been good and hope you'll have a great rest of the week and that you'll have a great weekend so please uh Take care. I hope all of you again are good. And I shall see you all next time. Bye.